Coming in, we start tonight with breaking news out of Indiana. Just moments ago, CEOs from some of the state's leading companies speaking out against the so-called religious freedom law. They sent a blistering letter to Governor Mike Pence, slamming the new bill that critics say could let religion be used to justify discrimination. Pressure is building, but Governor Mike Pence is standing his ground, refusing to push a new law protecting the civil rights of gays and lesbians. I will not push for that. That's, uh, that's not on my agenda, and that's not been, uh, uh, that's not been an objective uh, of uh, the people of the state of Indiana. Governor Pence says the law won't lead to discrimination, but watch him refuse to answer whether he thinks it should be legal to discriminate. Final yes or no question, Governor. Do you think it should be legal in the state of Indiana to discriminate against gays or lesbians? George, it's a yes or no question. Your, uh, come on, uh, Hoosiers don't believe in discrimination. Don't yes you? or no, should it be legal to discriminate against gays and lesbians? George, you're, you're following the mantra of the last week online. The governor saying little, but revealing a lot. This story is only just beginning with outrage across the country from protesters in the street to celebrities and social media and on TV to some of America's biggest companies, including Apple. This is a key moment for the country. Too often in our history, we've seen religion used to justify attacks on other people's rights, from slavery to Jim Crow to women's right to vote. That same fight is with us today, and we can't let it stand. Joining me now is Congressman Andre Carson, Democrat from Indiana, and Mayor of South Bend, Indiana, Democrat Pete Buttigieg. Thank you both for being here. Congressman Carson, you're you, at Reverend. the state capitol. What kind of damage is this law doing to your state? You know, the, the NCAA, which is hosting the Final Four this weekend uh, in Indiana, has already talked about canceling future events in the state. NCAA is, in fact, headquartered in Indiana and in Indianapolis, in my district. So it's disappointing, Reverend, because this bill uh, gives justification to individuals and even businesses to discriminate on the basis of religion. So we'll see discrimination against brothers and sisters from the LGBT community, women and minorities, and we know it's a slippery slope. And, and this really, uh, Congressman, is not about religion. It's really not even just about gays and lesbians, though they're the focal sure. point. It's about non-discrimination. I mean, I've been to your town. You've been there where I've Absolutely. preached at churches. We believe in That's religion, right. but we don't believe in a theocracy. That's right. That's right. And what we're seeing on the ground is that the people are pushing back. We're seeing members of the faith community. One of the pastors, our friend David Hampton, a member of the National Action Network, right. has pushed back. Uh, uh, other politicians are pushing back. Celebrities are speaking out. Sports figures are speaking out. And what we're going to see in the next few weeks, Reverend Sharpton, is a movement on the ground. And we know the National Na Action Network will be at the forefront of that movement because enough is enough. And Indiana is a great state. The people make the state great. But this is so embarrassing. I don't even think that what state legislators are trying to do right now is to, is, is to push a bill through the state house to clarify the language. But I think it's insufficient. A repeal is certainly in order. Well, one that has really been on the fair front is you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mayor Buttigieg, you've been speaking out against this law. Why is it so important to you? Well, when you're a mayor, you spend so much time and energy trying to attract businesses, trying to attract people to your community. Part of how you do that is you try to demonstrate that it's a 21st century community, that it's open to all. Look, we're all for religious freedom. I am, everybody in South Bend is. But that doesn't mean it's okay to harm others in the name of religion. This is a bill that sends the exact wrong message about our communities and about our state. And I wanted to get out there to let everybody know that this doesn't speak for all Hoosiers. This certainly doesn't speak for South Bend. We pride ourselves on being open to all. Mayor, the governor says he's standing by the law despite the backlash. Listen to this. We're not going to change the law. 
Okay, we're, we're not going to change this law. It has been tested in courts for more than two decades on the so, federal level. Me, what will it take to move the governor from that position? I think the governor needs to listen to Hoosiers. I think he needs to listen to the business community. You know, the interests of our state and our communities are not being well served when you refuse to budge on a very divisive social issue like this. Look, all it would take to reverse the damage would be to fix the law. A repeal would do that. So would including LGBT non-discrimination in our state civil rights law. If he would just at least be willing to add that kind of language to say it shouldn't be legal to discriminate against anybody in this state, then the argument that this isn't about discrimination would become a lot more convincing. Congressman, he, here's what the gay rights group GLAD, one of the prominent groups in the civil rights community, they report attending the governor's private signing ceremony, Governor Pence that is, is a man who equates homosexuality with bestiality, one who says homosexuality is a mental disorder, and another who stoked fear by claiming pastors could be arrested for preaching against homosexuality. Doesn't this show what's really behind this so-called religious freedom bill, Congressman Carson? You know, it's, it's very disappointing. I, I served with Governor Pence uh, in, in, in Congress. Uh, we've had lunch several times. Uh, I found him to be uh, a man very committed to his principles. Uh, but we've seen this before. We've seen religion be used to justify uh, slavery. Uh, we've seen religion used to justify discrimination in all forms, whether sexual or, or even religious. And we've seen religion used as a tool to divide people. So it seems as if there were members of the state legislature uh, who were throwing a bone to social conservatives who were very disappointed that gay marriage had been legalized in Indiana. Mr. Mayor, today Indiana's Republican House Speaker admitted discriminating against gays and lesbians is already legal in much of the state. Listen to this. You Senator guys have Arnold. said repeatedly that you, you know, we shouldn't be able to discriminate against anyone. But if you just ignore the, the existence of this law, can't we already do that now? Can't so-and-so in Richmond put a sign up and say, no gays allowed? That's not against the law, correct? It would depend on if you were in a community that had a human Which rights that uh, ordinance, uh, that wouldn't be the case. But the, most of the state does not have this, correct? That's correct. Mayor Buttigieg, uh, your city, South Bend, does have an ordinance against this discrimination. But doesn't That's right. most of Indiana need more protections, not fewer? That's right, and I wish more communities in Indiana would follow South Bend's lead. I was proud two years ago to sign the Human Rights Ordinance, and it's something that protects, by the way, it also protects freedom of religion. But at the same time, it protects GLBT residents from discrimination. We need more of that. And what's really troubling about this bill is it is aimed squarely at that local decision, which was the decision our community made. You know, I would expect conservative legislators and a conservative governor to be for local control, something that there's support for on both sides of the aisle. This is doing just the reverse, and I just can't understand why anybody, especially when we're competing for people, we're competing for jobs, we're competing for conventions, why would anybody want to send the message that we're turning back the clock on equality? And, and Congressman Carson, at a time the Republicans are saying they want to reach out, and as, as you talked about with the NCAA, here's what the CEO of Apple, Tim Cook, wrote today, quote, this isn't a political issue, it isn't a religious issue, this is about how we treat each other as human beings. Opposing discrimination takes courage, it's time for all of us to be courageous. Congressman, this is Tim Cook, this is Apple, you don't get much bigger than that today in America. Absolutely, I think Mr. Cook is right on the mark. Uh, what we're seeing, to Mr. Cook's point, is that we're seeing a national trend where there are elected officials who are attempting to, uh, to promote the rights of corporations over the rights of, of individuals, Americans, and even Hoosiers to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, Reverend. Do you think, Mr. Mayor, that the average Hoosier wants to be uh, looked upon in a way that their state represents the anti-civil rights uh, position in the 21st century, because if this continues, it's going to be on the fast track toward that. 
Exactly, and uh, I don't think that most Hoosiers are on board with that. Look, when people think of a city like South Bend or when they think of the state of Indiana, we want them to think about what's best about us. We want them to think of our, our scenery. We want them to think about the Indy 500 or uh, basketball or football. We want them to think of our economic growth. We don't want people to be thinking about discrimination against any group as the first thing that comes to mind when they think about our state and when they think about communities like South Bend. That's why we're stepping up to say this does not speak for all of us. I don't think this speaks for most of us. And we've got to take a stand and do what's right. Con Congressman Andre Carson and Mayor Pete Buttigieg, thank you both for your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend.